She was born, uh, I now am pretty sure, in Hayrand, um, and we know she was born in 1880. And her mother taught in the Bridgehampton Public School, or perhaps the private schools that uh, were run mainly on Ocean Road during the 18... 70s and 1880s. Well, she graduated from the Bridgehampton Academy, which we know was a private school that included boarders. It was very well known, not only in Long Island, but Connecticut, southern New England. She went to Wesleyan, and then she entered the um, School of Library Science that was in Albany. So after all that education, she graduated in 1904, and she went to the city uh, entered the New York City uh, library system, and by 1906, she was the head of the library um, on the Lower East Side. She was one of the first librarians in the United States to order ch uh, books in Chinese directly from China. And so she, that was the start of her philosophy that comes out both in the two uh, books she published and in these other writings. Um, about her concern that libraries serve their local neighborhoods in such a way not to anglicize uh, immigrants, but rather to make them feel comfortable in their own traditions, their own language, while they were learning English and, and really gaining an education. So all of this, what we now call outreach, uh, she was very much involved with uh, before World War I. That was one library, then she moved to another one where she served a population of uh, Russian Jewish immigrants. Um, she did that until uh, the end of World War I, about 1918. Of course, the U.S. had by that time entered the war. And she joined what was called the um, American Library Service, which was um, a part of the American Library Association. And in that capacity, she first went to Paris to open a library, it, it turns out, perhaps by chance, for American soldiers who were largely African American. The New York uh, Public Library System really clearly wanted to put her in an even bigger job than she had had before the war, so that's when she, they asked her to head up the branch library in Harlem, which she then uh, developed as by far the largest and most prominent of the New York uh, public library branches. Her, I would say her main legacy at the library, what we know today, is that she she was the founder of the Schomburg Collection, which is the basis for the African American Research uh, Center uptown, which uh, belongs to the New York uh, library system. And that's quite an extraordinary achievement. When she did retire uh, from her, all of her activities in the city, uh, she came back to her hometown. She uh, lived for probably, I guess, the last five years of her life in a house on School Street in Bridgehampton. And in 1946, um, her first contribution to Bridgehampton was to organize this community council. Um, a second contribution she made, she organized a Bridgehampton Women's Association. And then she also wrote her major book while she was, was retired here, the, the Public Library in American Life, which Columbia University published in 1954. She passed away in uh, 1961, um, um, but, but I, when asked last March who I could recommend from Bridgehampton to be uh, a prominent woman who had passed away before 1970, I, it's, it's clear that it, to me that it was Ernestine Mose. I still can't think of, of another one.